So what moves the golf club? Because this is reacting to the body, but what part of the body? <clears throat> well, the most important joint in the body connected to the club is the wrist. And the club is only doing, effectively, what the wrists are doing. So, in essence, if we want to improve our club head, face, path awareness, what we need to do is become aware of what our wrists are doing. More on a sensory feel level, okay? So how do we achieve that? Well, the wrists have got three main planes of motion available to them. Up and down, side to side, and rotation. So this is pronation, supination, this is ulnar radial deviation, and this is flexion and extension of the wrists. But we don't really need to know those biomechanical terms because this doesn't need to know them either, does it? It's all about the feel of the motion and our sense of what is actually happening during that motion. How do we sensitize ourselves to the end of the chain? Because this end of the chain should be the last thing moving in the sequence. This should be reacting to everything else that's gone on before. And those forces that we're transferring through to this club are really sensed through here. This is what we're controlling the face and path relationship with. So to attune ourselves to that relationship, we need to develop a much more enriched awareness of this end of the chain. The waggle is often talked about and you'll see all players on tour waggle the club. Now we can't, in my mind, read too much into how tour players swing. It's not really comparable to the everyday golfer. But what we can do is we can look at their behavior, not their conduct, but their actual physical behavior before they hit a golf shot. What are they doing that is eliciting this state for performance, for the shot they're about to play, that they've envisaged and are now developing a feel for? Well, the one thing that's moving, probably more than anything, is the club and what's moving the club the hand and the wrists so this is what we're using to develop awareness for the club to attune ourselves so it's important that we waggle the golf club but not just aimlessly i often see players just stood on the tee and just making a meaningless waggle in an effort just to become loose and to maybe maybe feel the club but is that really achieving the purpose? And is there enough specificity to, to that movement they're making? Or is it just a wild kind of movement with the club, which is kind of inducing a wild swing of the club? Because the waggle is a version of the golf swing. It's another form of movement with intent. And the intent is the golf shot. So our movement must have purpose in respect of the shot we visualized. So we're moving now to the picture of the shot and we're moving the end of the chain which is going to strike the golf ball and what we're also feeling is the sequence and notice the club head is lagging behind the hands. So there's a sequence there, there's a chain. There's also every plane of motion happening. We've got the up and down, we've got the side to side and we've got the rotation about the shaft. When you waggle the club, all three are taking place in different amounts, different speeds, but we're starting to feel rotation of the face and movement of the whole club. So this is starting to amplify our senses to what's happening at the end of the chain. You might notice some players grip regrip. We're starting to feel the club. We're sensitizing ourselves to the club. And then as we start to move the club, how does this correspond to the shot we intend to play? So a waggle more to the right might suggest a more into-out draw path. But the face, that needs to rotate too. If I just make a waggle and the face is square to the path, I'm encouraging, for me as a right-hander, a block. But as soon as I start to waggle the club and add some rotation in there, I'm starting to sense a face that is closing to the path. And that is going to encourage a draw. This would be a 
big draw. This would very much be a closed faced path. Maybe I want to play a big hook, a low hook into the wind, maybe a dog leg. This would be a straighter shot to the right. And in between there is probably the shot I'm wanting, a slight draw. Likewise, a waggle to the left. This might encourage more of a fade path, a more face biased release. If I close the face, so it's now square to the path, that's a straight pull. If I'm rotating it, this is more of a pull draw. So to play a fade, maybe as I'm waggling it, I'm keeping the face open to that intended path. So although I'm circling the club, there's the intention of a face path release here that directly correlates to that golf shot that I've already pictured. So maybe a good place to start with this is behind the ball. So here, we're waggling the club and we're using this as a sense of what we want to do with the swing. So this is just another element of the form of movement I'm going to make with the swing that connects me to what is happening at this end. This is the fine motor skill element of the chain. The body's going to create the speed, the power, this is going to deliver the club. So we want to be feeling that fine motor element here. And then, whilst we're doing that, we can start to paddle the feet. So we're starting to stamp. Don't keep the feet on the floor, we want to be moving the feet. You'll have seen on the pressure plate, on some of the lesson videos that I've done, as soon as you start to move the feet, the pressure tray shifts from side to side. So we're starting to interact with the ground. We're starting to get a sense of the forces that are available for us to use. We're starting to get a sense of tempo. This isn't a chip shot, this is, or a pitch shot, this is a drive. We're starting to up the tempo, we're starting to recruit bigger forces. So we can start to step from side to side and waggle the club and speed it up, slow it down, find that tempo for you. It's probably going to depend on the kind of shot you're playing as well. Waggling the club to marry up with the shot you intend to play, but also the tempo of the swing. You'll notice sometimes there's a quicker waggle or a slower waggle, watch the players on tour. I really suggest that you watch them very closely to look at how they prepare for the golf shot. They're always looking and then reacting with movement. Looking at what they intend to do, picturing either the start line or the ball flight, something to do with the ball flight or where the ball's going, and then they move in response to that. And when I say move, they're moving everything. And you may see them look and check things, but as soon as they start to move, they're reacting instinctively. There's a flow and there's always an initiation. There's always something that's cueing, triggering that movement. It might be a slight forward press. It might be a slight shift with the lower body, a rotation. There'll be something in their movement that starts the whole motion. It's like a counter move. It's priming the system ready to go, using that interaction with the ground, with the club, it's a sensory cue to execute that flow in motion. So we can use that in our practice swing. We can be here, waggling the club, and play the swing here that you intend to use there. Get a feel for the motion. You'll often see them twizzling the club. They've got very high acuity in their movement with the club. They can sense it. We need to have that sense of feel for it too, just like any other fine instrument that you use knife and fork, pen, you can feel the instrument. We become intuitively connected to it. And that's what we need to do with the golf club. That's what the waggle's doing. It's creating this connection between you and the club. It's a very dynamic interaction between you and the club. And we need to really amplify this connection. So the waggle helps us to achieve that. And then we can start to increase the movement from the waggle to the golf swing. So it starts with the waggle and the feet react. So both ends of the chain now, our interaction with the ground, our interaction with the club, this is what's really stimulating the system here because we're gonna be striking it with this and we're getting the power from here and we're joining the two. The dots are gonna join naturally if we allow it to happen. And what's gonna allow that to happen? That's the tempo, that's the rhythm, that's the flow. And that is the swing trigger. That's that initial movement that fires the whole chain. Back, 
and through because there's a chain that goes back and there's a chain that goes through so to go through the motion here stand behind the ball how comfortable do you feel twizzling the club in your hands okay does this feel comfortable to do is it easy for you or is it quite hard twizzling the club in the fingers we've got to really become sensitive to this golf club and we've got to be, become very aware and comfortable with our movement with the club we want that fine touch so twizzle the club make the waggle paddle the feet use that counter move picture that shot and then we just press the replay button so now the waggle you might start with big movements really feel that waggle and then start to refine the waggle now it's becoming more specific to the shot I intend and then we start to waggle and move the feet everything's moving together getting up in the tempo getting ready to create that momentum with that counter move and that's one of the best shots I've hit in a long time it's a great shot <laughs> and what we've done is we've just gone with the flow we've prepared ourselves we got ready and we committed the whole process that creates that commitment and that keeps our focus and that enables us to maintain that flow and it all started with the waggle.